Joblessness is falling, skilled workers are becoming harder to find, and some American employers could be running out of skilled people to hire. Really, it's one of those good, bad problems to have in a nation. Well, Japan has a similar issue, as the country faces an aging population and declining birth rates that will lead to labor shortages across the board. When it comes to being short-handed in the construction industry, Japan's National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, or ACE, has turned to robotics. Researchers recently unveiled a video of the Human Robotics Platform, or HRP 5P, prototype. It's a robot performing tasks that you would typically find on the construction job site, like picking up a piece of drywall from a stack, moving it into position, and anchoring it to the wall. The HRP 5P is capable, but the prototype is incredibly slow and seemingly thrown off balance every time it drives a screw. It looks like the drunk uncle that helped your dad turn the attic into a bedroom, but you know, it's your own space. The prototype is being designed to work autonomously at a large structure assembly site. Researchers have worked on improving the robot's ability to recognize and use objects, measure the environment, and given it a wider range of motion with whole body motion planning and control technology. The HRP 5P is nearly six feet tall and weighs about 223 pounds. I mean, much like that drunk uncle, in the height of the summer anyways. According to the researchers, the applications don't end at the construction sites, but the technology could also be used to build aircraft and ships. Robots could also be a safer option as laborers at these job sites regularly carry out dangerous and heavy work. ACE has been in the humanoid robotics game for a while. The HRP program dates back to the HRP-1 built back in 1998. I mean, they just tried to get that one to walk. The HRP-2 not only improved bipedal walking, but also the ability to lay down and stand up. The HRP-3 ushered in remote control, the ability to navigate slippery surfaces, and to perform simple tasks like fastening a bolt. And the HRP-4C was built for the entertainment industry. A bit of a departure, it was developed to look like a young Japanese female that can make facial expressions, gestures, and it can even talk. The reason that they are developing humanoid robots is that job sites haven't and likely won't change in the near future. Even though industries struggle to find human workers, they're not exactly changing the job site to accommodate autonomous robot workers. That's why they're developing humanoid robots. So essentially once they get up to speed, they're essentially plug and play. On Tuesday, we celebrated National Nanotechnology Day. It's a real thing. Had a hashtag and everything. Hashtag National Nano Day. The date, 10-9, is actually significant as the National Nanotechnology Initiative chose it because it pays homage to the nanometer scale, 10 to the negative nine meters of power, or one billionth of a meter. MIT made an elevator button, but I mean, nobody shrank or anything. I mean, like not even, they didn't even cut to like a clip from inner space where they touched the button and then shrink. It was just a non-working button. The Molecular Foundry made a mascot for kids, Nancy Nano, which, well, which looks like an animated STD, and Ford used the occasion to announce that it is for the first time in company history using graphene under the hood. Ford collaborated with Eagle Industries and XG Sciences to find a way to use small amounts, less than half of a percent, of graphene in fuel rail covers, pump covers, and front engine covers. While it's not cost effective to use in all applications, it is a very thin and flexible material that can provide a sound barrier and help make the parts lighter, but more durable. Noise reduction is particularly attractive as attempts to reduce cabin noise in the vehicle usually means adding material and weight. When engineers mixed the graphene with foam, tests showed a 17% reduction in noise, a 20% improvement in mechanical properties, and a 30% improvement in heat endurance properties. Engineers have called it a miracle material because it's 200 times stronger than steel and extremely conductive. The material stands to play a significant role in the automotive industry, particularly in paint, polymer, and battery applications. By the end of 2018, graphene will go into production on more than 10 components under the hood on the Ford F-150 and Mustang. According to the company, the tech will eventually be rolled out on other Ford vehicles. While the nation is working hard to replace the laborer with humanoid robots, Japan is also well known for its progressive approach to mass transit and its commitment to the bullet train. 
Last week, the East Japan Railway Company, or JR East, they announced plans for an experimental new train that could begin testing as soon as May 2019. They call it the Alpha X, and they're going to push the prototype to see if it is capable of reaching nearly 250 miles per hour. Once in service, it would average about 224. The Alpha X will test two new nose designs, one that's 16 meters long and another that is 22 meters long. The noses were developed to reduce the pressure generated when the bullet trains enter a tunnel at high speed. With both designs, the trains trade interior space for improved performance and lower noise. The designs also incorporate lighter materials and new vibration dampening components that make the Alpha X more efficient and hopefully provide a smoother ride for passengers. JR East also incorporated new earthquake detection technology like anti-earthquake dampeners, which help to keep the train stable, you know, when the earth starts shaking. The fastest train in America, the Amtrak from Boston to DC, averages 68 miles per hour, though it does top out at 150 along a few stretches. Still a far cry from the Alpha X. I'm David Manti, this is Engineering by Design.